Hello, welcome to our presentation on security threats and countermeasures for embedded systems. So today we're going to talk about how you design a system for security. And in particular, we're going to focus on the Renesis Board ID security chip. Uh, first, my name is Mark Schaefer with Granite Key. And we at Granite Key, we do security management planning and design services. And we do security implementations, which generally include software development, systems integration, and business process engineering. Um, some of the products that we have include uh, Granite Lock firmware, which runs on security chips for providing security services. Our provisioning authority, which is similar to a certificate authority, but issues certificates and identity to people, I'm sorry, to devices instead of people. And then the Granite View risk modeling tool. And finally, we provide management consulting services. It's very important that when designing for security, you have to view it very similar to quality, where both management and engineering need to understand the quality or security mindset and how that affects the security of the system. Security, again like quality, has to be done at a holistic level, the whole system level as opposed to the component level. So our agenda is to really understand how security is an extension to quality. And like quality, security itself is not a business objective. The business objective is to save money. It's really about your return on investment. And so let's really try to understand that as we go through the presentation here. But first, let's talk about the security environment. So what are some of the trends today that affect the need for security? One is globalization, the big G word. So today, relative to say 10 or 20 years ago, there's a lot of competition. Margins are getting very tighter. There's a larger pool of hackers. And also the legal environment in a lot of third world countries and other countries is not what we experience in the United States and Europe, for example. We really take for granted how our legal environment really protects our revenue stream. Um, other areas are uh, ROIs have to be very, very, are very critical because timelines are very, very short in products. And so you need to generate a return on investment very, very quickly in your products. Um, larger global volumes. So it may not seem feasible for a hacker, for example, to spend $20,000 to break into a system. But if they're dealing with something that has volumes of millions, it only costs, say, a couple of pennies of investment to get a, a large financial return out of that. So $20,000 is not a lot of money in a large global environment. And finally, risk management, enterprise risk management is very, very much at the attention of the board of directors level. And quality and security are important components of that board level view of things. So first, I'm going to start with an analogy here. Um, if you look at our, our slides here, the system. And I think this is very self-explanatory, but let me go through this and really illustrate the metaphor, the analogy that we're, that we're really, we need to think through when we're talking about security. One is you want to protect an asset. And in this case, it's money. It could be intellectual property. It could be a, uh, a product that you have. And what you do typically is commonly in security, you use some kind of technology to protect that asset. If this would be a, an integrated circuit, security algorithms, and imagine it's the lock on your front door. And as you can see in this particular example, that that is not enough. You really need to consider several other factors. And a lot of this is very much common sense, but it's very easy to really focus on the security technology when in reality the security technology is just a very, very small component of the solution. One is to think, to think about is the process. Where are the keys, for example? And the classic analogy is, I got the key under the door, Matt, and I've got a great lock on my door. Very, very important to understand that from a technology point of view. And finally, the system, in this case, the plastic bag. I can have the best security technology in the world, but if my system isn't secure, it really is pointless. The weak link in the chain is the system. So now let's take that analogy and let's extend that to a real system. Same analogy, let's look at a real system. In this case, let's say we have a host and a peripheral. Let's say the host is a PC and, for example, the peripheral might be a battery. We want to make sure that we don't have any, any clone batteries in the system. So what we can do from a technology point of view is we can take, for example, a board ID chip and we can have keys stored in each chip, one on the host and one on the peripheral, and we could do an authentication. And the idea here is that the board ID chip or the security chip on the host is going to authenticate the chip on the peripheral and will refuse to operate if the peripheral does not have a proper chip in it. And let's say, it's a, in the case of a board ID chip, the chip cannot be easily cloned. So what now do we need to do to secure the system? What is the process? What is the system? And here's where the complexity comes. A security chip by itself can't do anything. But what it can do is it can send a signal to an application 
that would, for example, enforce the security algorithm or the security measure that we've chosen. The problem is that it's very easy to reflash the software. So instead of trying to hack into the security chip, you can reflash the software. That's what's called a scalable security threat, meaning that you, anybody can download a piece of software without any special equipment and reflash the application, especially in a PC environment. So what are some of the things we can do to increase the security? We're going to go through a path here where we're going to increase the security gradually. One is the security chip can have a hardware line that connects to the power source, say the power supply, and it can disable the power if the peripheral is not authentic. And the reason why this improves security is because even if you reflash the application, in order to hack into the system, you also have to grab a piece of hardware, a blowtorch, a pair of pliers, a soldering gun, a magnifying glass. And not a lot of people are going to be willing to do that. So what you're doing is you're actually reducing the scalability of your threats. So this actually improves security. It doesn't eliminate the number of hackers, but it significantly reduces them. Let's say that's not enough. Let's say this is a military system. If this is a commercial application, you might stop right there and say, I don't need to go any further. But if this was a military application, you would want to go a little bit further. Some of the things you might want to do is you might want to put what's called a secure boot in there. And the idea here is that if the firmware was changed, that the system would not boot up if the firmware that was on the system had been modified. Some other things you can do. You can have various legal auditing and inspection business processes. And a lot of times in a strong legal environment, for example, what you can do is you can rely on these business processes auditing. You can audit your suppliers. So a lot of things you can do to improve your security. So what we're, we're not really talking about a technology. We're talking about a process. This is like quality. It's got to pervade the whole organization. The security technology is a very small part of it. Some other things we can do. We can put a metal box around the system. We could even put an explosive in the metal box if you wanted to. We could put a security guard in there if we wanted to. This is a financial decision. The question is how much value is stored in your system? If somebody hacks into it, what is the cost of failure? And how much does it cost to put each of these measures in there? And what is your return on investment? It's not a technology decision. It's a financial decision. So that is our security environment. So now we're going to move on to some security technologies. And this is actually the easy part. 